Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Friendly Arm was kind enough to send us over a little bit of a care package here. So when I'm done with my other giveaway, we'll be getting onto this. We have two Nanopi S2s, two Nanopi M2s, and two Nanopi M3s. So I have a giveaway right now for some can of kits and stuff like that. I want to get that out of the way. That ends April 1st, and then about a week after that, I'll announce the giveaway for this. I'm going to have three or four of these to give away. Let's go ahead and get one of these unboxed and we're probably going to start with the Nanopi M3. Okay, so here's the Nanopi M3. This one contains Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in along with 8 gigabytes of eMMC storage. It has an 8 core 1.4 gigahertz Nexel CPU, two USB 2.0 ports, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, full size HDMI, gigabit ethernet, SD card slot on the bottom here, 40 GPIO pins. It's not that powerful of a board, but they do offer Android for these boards, and a lot of you guys want to run Android on your single board computers. So next up, we have the Nanopi M2, and my lovely assistant is going to help me unbox this one. So this is very similar to the Nanopi M3, except it lacks Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now that's a big downside with this board here. Same specs, 8-core Nexel CPU, Mali MP400 GPU. It will run Android. It will run Linux. It doesn't have built-in eMMC storage either. All of these boards do contain one gigabyte of DDR3 RAM. And finally, this is the one I'm most excited about. This is the Nanopi S2. It has a Cortex A9 S5 P4418 quad-core CPU clocked at 1.4 gigahertz. These are Samsung CPUs, but they're manufactured by Nexel, so that's why I'm calling them Nexel CPUs. Same GPU, it's a Mali MP400. We have 802.11 BG and N Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, no ethernet. And the only downside I see to this board here, besides the underpowered GPU, is one USB port, which I can live with, but it has micro HDMI. So I want to do a dedicated video to each one of these boards here. This was just kind of a collaboration with all of them together. I wanted to show you what I got. Right now I'm going to be switching over to the S2 running Android 5.1. Now this is their latest release. We're going to see how it performs. I'm going to test it a little while and then we'll get into some benchmarks and some gameplay. All right, guys, so here's the Nanopi S2 running the latest version of Android 5.1 that Friendly Arm offers. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi work amazing on this little board. I'm actually very impressed. Now I've run into a problem where benchmarks will not finish. Geekbench won't finish and 3D Mark. The only one I was able to get to finish was AN22. First thing we're gonna do is just check out IDA64. We have the friendly arm, AOSP on the Nanopi 2, even though this is the Nanopi S2, one gigabyte of RAM, and we also have eight gigabytes of internal eMMC storage on the S2. You can also use an SD card, but I opted to flash it to the internal storage. Next up for the CPU, we have the quad core ARM Cortex A9 at 1.4 gigahertz. As you can see, CPU usage is very low right now. Display, 1280 by 720, and we're using a VR400 MP. This is actually the Mali MP400. As you can see, the Nexel. So a lot of people, a lot of Linux users hate these Nexel CPUs, but I think the CPU is pretty good. It's just that GPU that's killing me right now. Let's go ahead and check out Antutu. It wasn't that great. Now, I wasn't expecting it to score even this high, to tell you the truth. And it's not that high, but it's 22,158. I would go in and do some comparisons with other devices, but this is so low, it's not even worth going in and checking them out. We're going to move on to Asphalt Extreme. So all three of these boards are going to have very similar performance. Even though the M3 has an eight core CPU, most of these games only utilize two cores and it has the same GPU. So you can pretty much expect the M3 is going to run the same as the S2. 
So I did have sound recorded, but I left the music on and it's all copyrighted music. So I figured I'd just do a little bit of gameplay here. And as you can see, it's pretty laggy. You could play it. I would not call this playable though. As soon as you start crashing into stuff, it's just really hard to pull out of it because of the lag. And I think I'm about to crash up here. Yes, it's just pretty bad. So this is about the best performance we're gonna get out of any of these friendly arm boards on Android for gameplay. Now, if they would have went with a little bit of a beefier GPU like the Mali 450 MP4, it would have been a whole nother story, but they went with the MP400. Next up, we're gonna try Minecraft. So before we get started here on Minecraft, this is a very highly optimized game for tons of devices. And Minecraft runs almost perfectly on here. I have it set to six chunks. I expected it to run pretty good on this board here. Now overall, my favorite thing to do with these friendly arm boards is run Diet Pie on it. There's a lot of options within Diet Pie, and I find that Linux, even though it's running an older kernel, it runs really good on these little boards here. I'm going to do a quick dynamite test over here and see if we can crash this board. I don't think we're going to be able to crash it, but it's going to be worth a shot here. Well, it handled it a lot better than I thought it would. So I always do a little bit of a dynamite test. I know this isn't full blown Minecraft, but the pocket edition does lag out pretty good when you do some dynamite. So like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm going to be doing a standalone test on all three of these boards. Now, one of the main things I want to test is Cody. And right now I've had a lot of people bitching at me about installing pirated apps like the Exodus and stuff like that. But 99.9% .9 of people are not going to have a NAS filled with movies that they can stream from in home. That's all there is to it. That's why I do streaming from Exodus. I'll be sure to set something up so we can stream from in-home also. Now, overall, it's a very cheap, low-powered board. Pretty small. It's a little bigger than the Raspberry Pi Zero. I'll do size comparisons in my later videos, but if you guys are interested, in a few weeks, I will be doing a giveaway on a NanoPi M2, an M3, an S2 and a NanoPi PC T3. So stay tuned for those. And like always, thanks for watching.